Hello and welcome everyone. Today is Thursday, August 18th. Uh, this is our community call where the topic for today is really, I realize we, we just kind of put possibly too many words into the intention of today's call around mission, vision, culture, values. That might be a, a little more to uh, more than uh, we were shooting to discuss. But I think especially uh, at least starting off with the mission and vision portion of things and really having a discussion. There's no sort of a formal presentation or anything for today. Uh, we've just gotten feedback from a number of folks that it's not always, uh, it hasn't been fully clear, especially for folks who are newer to SCURF. And we're trying to uh, have some more intentional facilitated workshops in the in the coming weeks or months around that and find new ways of sharing it. Uh, but still, in the meantime, we didn't kind of want to delay and at least wanted to, to open up a discussion around certain aspects of this. Uh, and so I'll just start off with, uh, with something very brief, uh, just in terms of uh, some of the, you know, kind of founding intentions of SCURF and how things uh, started rolling out. Uh, and at least from my own vantage point, how uh, what, what my view on these things are, uh, and would love to have a discussion and see where people kind of, where that resonates or where it feels like that's not really translating. Uh, and I know we've also gotten feedback that especially seeing uh, the scurf.io website, which hopefully everyone here has had a chance to take a look at it. Um, but getting a look at that website has kind of helped uh, just clarify what some of that uh, could actually mean and look like a little more. So yeah, again, it would, would just be great to get additional feedback from folks in terms of what else we can be doing to truly uh, clarify and elucidate it. Uh, and I guess before we jump into the full uh, mission vision discussion, I just want to kind of take a few moments to plug some other activities and other happenings at SCURF. I know right after this, we're going to be happy having, excuse me, our first live discussion in our Discord, uh, led by John, uh, and uh, that's going to be on privacy. So John, do you wanna jump in for a moment and quickly plug uh, where people will be able to, to head to that after this? Yeah, uh, just jump on the Discord. There's a live channel. Uh, you should be able to join it. This is our first time trying this though, so if you can't, let us know and we'll figure out permissions. Uh, everyone is, it's basically gonna be a, a similar as like sort of similar community call feel where anyone can talk and participate in the discussion. I'll basically kick it off and make sure we stay sort of on task. Uh, and we're gonna try to inform everything that we talk about with any research uh, that people have posted to the forums having to do with privacy on the blockchain. And I know I've posted uh, three summaries. There they are. Uh, there's three summaries. I'll throw them in the Google chat here really quick and I'll also post direct invite to the voice chat if no one's used Discord before. Um, but you don't need to read the summaries, just come and talk about it and we'll we'll bring it up as we as we go. And hopefully we'll be able to build these as we move forward. This is just the beginning of it. So let us know if you can think of a, a better way to do something or a way to improve something. Uh, also let us know if you want to lead one of these in the future. If you think there's a uh, topic that has enough research on SCURF related to that topic and you can lead a discussion. Uh, the only requirement is that you try to incorporate some of the research that's there and that you let everyone else participate in the discussion. We don't want any sort of soapboxing. Um, that's that's that, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. I mean, and it will go for as long as we wanna talk about stuff. It's gonna be a little more fluid than the community calls while everyone can talk. So we might get tangenty and whatnot and we'll, we'll go until we're we're done talking. So it could be 15 minutes, it could be 60 minutes, I guess is what I'm saying. So come check it out, it'll be fun. Yeah, really excited to, to see those come up. I unfortunately had a conflict come up for today, but really excited to join these. And next week, I think we're gonna have uh, hopefully two folks from the Blockchain for Science, uh, the original conference that was put on in 2017, 2018. We'll have them join. And just a real quick thing, because I know it's going to be our first time running one of these, so just a, a quick bit on where you will go if you're not sure. Uh, in general, you can find events through this event calendar that's listed. You should see all of the events that are coming up, ranging from this call that we're in now with the relevant Google info to the coffee house chat, where you'll just be able to click on this live portion and it'll open it up. Uh, and I saw Brian uh, mentioned a, a skill sprint. I'll let you jump in in a moment to, to plug that one as well. But yeah, we have kind of all of our events listed out here. Uh, and I believe you might actually be able to go through the live channel uh, as well. If you go through this live category and just click here, 
uh, that should, yeah, that just started me there. But yeah, when you click on that, you will be automatically, uh, your mic turns on or it should prompt you if it's your first time using audio within Discord of like, hey, do you wanna give access? Um, I don't remember if you have to restart or not uh, the first time around, which uh, if you're having mic difficulties and it's your first time, just close Discord out and reopen it and it should be fine. Um, but yeah, uh, let us know if anyone's having issues finding that afterwards, but uh, hopefully this is the beginning of uh, many of these live discussions. So really excited for that. Um, yeah, so thank you, John, on that one. Uh, Brian, did you wanna jump in on and plug the, the skill sprint you dropped information about in the chat? Thank you for that as well. Yeah, sure. So tomorrow friday at 10 a.m pacific time i'm going to host a skill sprint on the topic of how to build a source cred payment model which is going to go over the following steps how to use the source cred algorithm to generate the cred rank graph and basically get the cred rank percentage scores against the smart contract research forum our discourse forum and then to then import that information into a google sheet and I'll show you how it is that we um, calculate the payment model for source cred here at SCURF. And the idea is that for those interested in joining the source cred guild, which is a monthly held meeting here at SCURF, uh, that you can contribute your own concepts for uh, different types of payment models that you might want to see uh, voted on, uh, implemented, talked about, et cetera. The skill sprint series is not a, uh, like it, we don't have predefined times. It's kind of dynamic right now. And it's also an open platform. So really we invite anybody with a knowledge set who would like to contribute to a skill sprint to do so. And if you would like to do that, please reach out to me directly if you have an idea of something that you might like to share. And that's about it. Awesome, thank you, Brian. Chris, you had your your virtual hand up in there. Do you want to jump in with something? It it was a question, but I'm I'll save it till tomorrow since I was going to go to the skill sprint. So, gotcha. Okay. Does anyone have any other kind of events or or scurf related happenings that you would like to share with the rest of the community at the moment? I'll just quickly plug uh, next week where you're going to have round two of the Impact Networks reading group, and by round two, I mean we're actually going to get to the second half of the book. That will be at 11 a.m. Eastern time, UTC minus four um, on Wednesday, August 24th. Uh, so yeah, we'll be doing the second half of Impact Networks then. And for anyone who wants to join, uh, that's sort of the uh, beginnings of the official SCURF reading group and there's the voting online. Um, uh, Umar, if someone can quickly drop the link to where to vote on the next book. I think that vote is still open or did it close? Sorry if it did that close and I forgot. That vote did close uh, on Tuesday, and the book that was selected is The Infinite Machine by Camila Rousseau. There we go. So that will be our September reading for the official reading group. So uh, after next week's session, we will propose a rough timeline uh, for, uh, for The Infinite Machine in September. Uh, and yeah, if anyone is interested in sort of a, an external reading group around open science uh, with uh, Inesh, myself, and a few other folks, uh, who are coming together for that let me know we're going to finish reinventing discovery next week so probably a little too short notice to, to finish the, the that book by uh by tuesday uh, but if you want to join for the subsequent ones in september we're probably going to jump into ben reinhardt's piece exploring uh sort of what what uh yeah just exploring darpa and some of the interesting elements of its organizational and institutional design that might have led to some of its successes and you know what can other organizations learn about that, especially if trying to create a structure like that that is not reliant on the defense uh, and military uh, apparatus to be able to sustain it. Um, and you know, for us, what does that mean in more open or decentralized context where there isn't a single entity per se coordinating this mass activity and is that even feasible? Uh, so yeah, if anyone wants to learn more about that one, let me know. I'll give a quick pause in case there is anyone else who wants to plug any other scurfy related things coming up in the next week or so. Sounds like no. So cool, let's go ahead and jump into the uh, mission vision portion and, and kind of take uh, the discussion where it goes from there. So, you know, some background context, I'm assuming, well, actually I should not be assuming what, what is uh, known or is not known to folks. So let me just go ahead and, and just give the, the little 
uh, background where, uh, you know, the, the sort of history of Scurf started uh, when Rich Brown, hopefully everyone here is, <laughs> knows Rich, uh, and on the other hand, Sergey Nazarov, who is the co-founder, and he, I believe he was the CEO of Chainlink, I think it just stepped away from the C-suite titles. Um, but anyway, so uh, Sergey and Rich met after Rich retired from MakerDAO, uh, and they started kind of batting around ideas of just, was there anything that got them both excited? And the thing that, that came up for both of them was the fact from very different perspectives, just given their own experience, um, they had the, the general interaction type of, hey, I think all of my colleagues that are working on a certain problem should be aware of certain knowledge, and they don't even know what that, that that knowledge exists. To be more concrete, I know Rich and I had similar experiences separately, but when just getting into the space uh, in 2016 or so, talking to anyone who is interested in DAOs and mentioning the word co-op, right? Nine times out of 10, people are like, huh, what's a co-op? I've never heard of one of those before. Uh, and that seems something that's highly relevant domain knowledge for people building DAOs. And so, you know, Sergey had his equivalencies amongst, uh, I believe, oracles and various technical challenges that they were exploring. And so the idea came up with, hey, what if we start building some kind of forum and community where we can actually help with this knowledge exchange? where it's not just sort of doing an open directory of research, but it's actually a moderated forum where there can be long tail discussions focused around research uh, for the specific intention of kind of narrowing the gap between pure theory and pure application, right? Because there's world who there's people who live in the world of, of pure theory and especially in academia, right? And it's kind of most critical version where it's folks in pearly, uh, you know, with pearly white walls and some fancy academic building somewhere who are deck Void from actual problems that are being dealt with on the ground and just getting lost in pure abstract theory. Uh, and that's obviously not a fair way to categorize all academia, but that's sort of one extreme of, uh, of a spectrum. And on the full other end of the spectrum is just, hey, quarterly driven profits, what can I sell people? How do I just get stuff in front of people that they kind of want? And so as we think of the various gradients of this kind of spectrum, uh, right, the majority of folks building products, they are focused on a certain kind of problem that they see people having, and they want to build a solution for that kind of problem. And of course, there's a gradients of like pure consulting work versus kind of sponsored research in academic environments, which for those who, who don't know, it's sort of a, a company coming in and saying, hey, we care about this problem space, Go about it how you do it. We're not telling you what the research you should be doing is, but we would love to see some, you know, focused energy and direction in this kind of problem space. Uh, and then there's kind of more open-ended things like gift-based funding, which is pretty much saying, hey, researcher, you're super smart. Here's a bunch of money, just go do your thing. And we're excited to see the outcomes. And so, right, there's all these different flavors of how research and knowledge actually gets generated. And the whole idea of SCURF was, how can we facilitate between those more on the theory side and those more on the applied side to have more positive outcomes that can lead to applic better application of existing research, potentially better generation, or not better, excuse me, generation of new relevant research, which itself then gets facilitated to the right people in industry, uh, and to figure out what are the other connection points and interaction types between these demographics that would actually help both the research advance and as a result, the whole space advance. And so that was kind of some of the uh, the desires uh, at the very early stages of the organization, kind of the, the founding mission and mandate, so to say. And so we started with the forum in order to have a place where we can incentivize folks to summarize their research and hopefully then begin the journey of getting it to the right people and have the long-term discussion around it. And, uh, you know, since then, uh, and overall, right, to, to take a quick aside of what is SCURF overall, right, we have our forum, we have our content team. Uh, once we have content generated, the engagement team is very focused on building the community uh, around that and figuring out what are the best ways to moderate the forum and engage with the forum and the kind of content that goes up on the forum. Uh, and how do we maximize the overall community engagement around research discourse? Uh, and then the discovery team is sort of focused on, well, how do we tell the world about all of these activities? Uh, the outreach team is thinking, well, what additional events or strategic partnerships can we relate, uh, can we create, excuse me, to both let the world know, but also to solidify bringing in more and more of a, a strategic, uh, strategically desired folks into SCURP. Uh, and operations is sort of a foundational layer just to make sure uh, that all of the other units are able to kind of operate and move things going forward generally. And so, you know, this, the mission at SCURF, and we, we have, um, I probably should have pulled up the branding language around mission vision. Uh, and we have a, you know, a mission statement uh, that, that was generated and um, 
this actually might be a slightly dated one, so I don't want to pull it up in case it's the wrong one uh, while I'm multitasking, right? But the whole general idea here is uh, we want to make sure to facilitate the uh, to to highlight the facilitation, which is very much the what are we trying to do, uh, while balancing it with the why of well why are we doing all of this to try to help the the space advance. Uh, and yeah, I think that's hopefully that's a, a hopefully that that's not total news to folks here uh, in terms of some uh, high level uh, information around this. Now I'd love to actually pause there for a little bit to just see if, does that resonate? Do, does anyone here feel like, hey, this is the first time I'm hearing of any of this? Uh, or uh, from the other direction of just the on the ground activities don't feel fully connected into this. Uh, I just kind of want to take a, a moment to pause to open the door to any kind of discussion around that for a little bit. Now it feels like we're having a silence off. Who can handle the most silence? I guess maybe a more staring contest. Oh, sorry. Yeah, staring, yeah, staring contest. But my, I win because yeah, my camera's off. So. Yeah, so that seems like an unfair advantage at the moment with uh, with the call uh, layout. And I guess to broaden it out, I mean, I'd be interested in hearing people's experience, not just in SCURF, but in terms of these kinds of right knowledge ecosystem type communities or knowledge communities or knowledge commons communities or whatever, however you want to abstract what we're doing here. What are some other examples that you've seen where you've either been or other communities where you've hung out uh, that either do have like clearly articulated mission vision that you got excited about or just other communities that you think we should be aware of and uh, keeping an eye on how they're operating and doing things uh, as we're trying to continuously grow and expand what SCURF is up to. I can't think of, I apologize if I get cut off, my dog is attacking me, uh, but I can't think of uh, specific open source communities or anything like that or the projects in the Web3 space, but I'm curious about how SCURF and its mission relates to maybe the way, stop it. Uh, um, wow, distracting. Uh, maybe the, the, the way that like industry and academia already relates. Like if I'm in academia and I develop like a new way to manufacture graphene, how do I get that information to the company that's going to manufacture the graphene in the first place? So do yeah, and, yeah, absolutely. And sort of I, I, I think a mission that we had and in general, right, there's the connect industry and academia. Uh, and especially if talking to folks from a heavily academic environment, you can usually make the joke of I'm sure you've never heard that one before because they usually hear it many times a day of some other group, especially if they're in like CS or engineering backgrounds where it's like, hey, we're here to connect you to industry. Where really that just means like, hey, we're trying to take as much uh, out of you as we can and extract it into uh, some mass production cycle that might not fully respect uh, kind of your full journey of generating that research. So um, it's its own kind of, uh, interestingly present, but both uh, not uniform thing, where depending on uh, the, the specific industry and the focus area, the model of who is trying to, to bridge that gap between industry and academia uh, can look very different. What are their intentions? And at the end of the day, who's funding them? How many, what are their operations? And how much uh, focused uh, work is there actually put into trying to help all of the players and stakeholders as opposed to whoever is just signing the checks there. Um, but yeah, Chris, please. Yeah, when you posed the question, if anything was like scurf, I was really struggling to find anything remotely close. And I, I think what I nailed upon in my mind as being the distinguishing trait is scurf does not like, obviously it has self-interest in keeping the organization going, but concerning any specific protocol or any specific product or any specific widget, there's no special interest. So it allows SCURF to actually participate in a conversation without having a vested interest one way or another. 
um, and I don't really think even even like an artist co-ops that is not something that you really see because people someone ends up inevitably trying to like leverage the organizational resources specifically for themselves and i don't i just don't see that in scurf as being something that and there's there's a, a multitude of reasons but i know like i know personally like i have way more options to go other places for more money so i'm here voluntarily and the longer i'm here voluntarily the more i'm inclined to be here because i'm like in line with scurf's mission rather than because of some financial uh incentive and it's like i think it's not just me but other people like are in the same boat where they could go other places to make more money but because of Scurf's mission alignment, that's why they are here. And in, in, in that sense, I don't really see many organizations that, that operate that way. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, I'm going to drop two examples of just ones that I, I particularly had interaction with when I was at Carnegie Mellon. Uh, and it, it felt very fundamentally very different than what, what we've been going for here. And I think the fact that uh, what is part of what I see as so unique about how we are structured is the fact that our funders were very okay with like, hey, your goal to exist is not just so that we get better as your funder, it's we get better by you helping everyone and we are part of everyone there. So I, I do think that that cultural tone of really trying to approach this as a public good for the space, as opposed to just like pick the top stakeholders and make sure like the five, 10 people that we like the most or that we can profit off the most or whatever. And that's not a purely fair way to categorize other players that are trying to build that bridge, right? But again, just given the realities of their funding channels, they have much more direct pressure for some kind of conversion. Uh, and Faith, we'll definitely jump back to your question, but I, I wanna give John a chance to respond as well. Yeah, I mean, I agree to an extent with what you're saying, Chris, but I also am a very strong believer, and it is a belief that um, there is no such thing as altruism and there is no such thing as a public good. Like, so it does, if we assume that truth as a as a belief, then what is SCURF getting out of everything it's doing? uh is a question that's got to be asked and i think eugene you just pointed that out a little bit like the people who are giving scurf money to operate might at some level believe that they're raising all boats and there'll be some of the first boats there to to raise off and stuff because they're helping it go uh but it i'm curious if scurf has a long-term vision about how it's going to sustain itself and operate in the future or if it's just constantly going to be uh essentially nonprofit operation I just want to push yeah. back on the notion that altruism doesn't exist in the sense of like, I know personally I am an altruist and I am an anti-imperialist and there's certain things about like, I know personally that I would absolutely like, like that's central to my identity. So for people to say that that doesn't, I, I, like, it, it's like, I can't tell you how much to my core that's like disturbing that people wouldn't believe altruism exists and i'm like whoa that's that's like scary that you can't believe altruists exist in in like the real world yeah i definitely don't mean to to shake a personal foundation or anything like that it's just trying to inform no, the question not, like it's not where, that you're shaking my personal foundation it's like crazy to me that people don't yeah. believe in altruism because i am an altruist like it's like whoa you can't you can't possibly believe that people like me exist that's like that's craziness. Yeah, it, it's more trying to get to the question of what is, how is SCURF going to operate if it's just trying to to move forward by taking volunteer action? Uh, I, I contribute to another community that's solely based on volunteer action. And it's a very interesting conversations we get into there, but as it relates to SCURF, I'm curious if there's any sort of business plans or future mission uh, sort of vision around this. Yeah, so there's a, a to try to uh, address some of the, the future vision portion. I think that, right, in terms of what we were getting at, and, and Mohammed, sorry, we'll, we'll, I'll jump back to you in a moment. Uh, but to, to just address some of that directly, you know, I think there's an element of, well, first off, no, at this point in time, we don't have a clear, like, here's when we, you know, when we hit milestone X, we transition to, to a business around all of this, et cetera. And I do think there is a strong 
desire uh, amongst uh, at least uh, Rich, myself, and some of the other folks in, in core ops and, and folks who've been here from the beginning to kind of push the bounds on what is the most that we could do from a public good funding and how do we line up as much sustainable funding. So I'm very interested in exploring uh, and running partnerships potentially with groups like uh, those developing the proposal inverter and how do we, because I know they are very also interested in how do we create uh, as part of uh, create a new cultural standard in Web3 that protocols actually dedicate part of their funding, like a small percentage uh, of transaction fees or the overall pot or however you want to frame it, uh, but to actually create consistent funding mechanisms into the world of research. Uh, and hopefully if we continue providing value to the ecosystem, then presumably some of that would come in our direction. And so I think uh, one element of the experiment we are running here is very much pushing the bounds on how much sustainable funding can be created in a nonprofit model around this when there is a deep cultural commitment to like, hey, we're not here to play for one or two players in this space. We're really trying to figure out this complicated mix in infrastructure support that is needed to actually help kind of grease the wheels across the industry for more research advancement. Uh, and we do really believe that uh, and there would be some benefits to creating a structure like that because the more we can be in the public good space, the more over time we can keep a very long time horizon in view and stay rooted and committed to that as opposed to getting lost in funding cycles, which will inevitably be the case while we are still dealing with the initial growth phase. Um, so yeah, I, I recognize that some of this might be idealistic and not realistic, but we, we also don't have a lot of good evidence of saying, here's where the line is drawn between idealism and realism in this context. And so I think that there is one interesting aspect to the experiment and kind of seeing what the bounds of that are. Um, on the other hand, and I, I know in some, w w as, as we're having more discussions and I would love to have a, a workshop or discussion in the future on kind of the, the role of decentralized research centers and why that feels relevant to longer term vision here because SCURF at its core is this kind of interdisciplinary foundation where we want anyone who's doing relevant research or trying to apply relevant research, we want SCURF to be a welcome home for them to come and be able to intellectually advance themselves in some kind of way or personally advance, right? Even if you're not finding, uh, you know, like you're not having a light bulb moment while you're in our Discord or while you're in our forum, uh, but you can connect with someone and have a great discussion, which then sets off that light bulb moment, which will still get that positive end result that we're hoping to, uh, to provide. And so as part of that, right, we still need to do a lot of experimentation with the nature of facilitated interactions. And how do you actually get useful knowledge to people? Uh, and I'm actually going to be, be rude and excusing myself from this call in a little bit, because today there's actually a really interesting example being run uh, with the global, uh, the governance learning forum run by Orca and other internet, which is taking a really interesting model of having roughly 100 or so uh, folks from the industry and 10 academics that give a very focused lecture. And then you have these breakout sessions of what does it mean to apply the knowledge from that lecture in the domains where you operate. And so uh, I'm in one on the knowledge commons and what does governing the knowledge commons look like and mean. So it's really cool to just see different versions of facilitated interactions around research emerge. And that a lot of these groups that are experimenting with this seem to want to partner with us and to, to want to continue collaborating with us in running more of these in the future. So I think SCURF can be a really unique uh, connecting read amongst all of these various individual efforts in the space and to hopefully co-define a culture that sticks to that public good side even if many or all of us over the long run have to turn to a non non-profit uh, or like a for-profit model but again i think there's a, a it's encouraging to see the amount of groups that are willing to push the bounds of not needing to monetize and there's more than enough wealth just in the crypto world and interest at the moment, right? We'll see what it looks like 10 years from now. But as of right now, there's enough interest and money within granting organizations and foundations to keep experiments like us around for probably at least five to 10, if not more years. Uh, and then we will see as the industry evolves, uh, by the time we actually hit mass market adoption as a space, right? Will we have already codified dedicated streams and sustainable streams via nonprofit mechanisms, or do we actually have to think of something different in the future? So I don't see the door being closed on that. Uh, I just don't want to prioritize business models because I feel like that can, we can unintentionally jump to rushing to create a sustainable structure earlier than we needed to, and in turn miss a lot of great opportunity for the public good side. Yeah, uh, just to quickly respond and then I'm done because I see all the hands up and it's great to see people talking. Um, the, 
just to, to clarify, I'm not thinking like for profit models when it's like sustainable business. It's we live in the crypto space, so we have the opportunity to play with national currencies uh, and make some really interesting, quote unquote, business models, you know, like Filecoin and how, how IPFS works and how our weave works and how all these different cryptos, how Bitcoin works, monetize and create sustainability over the long run by producing networks that could be defined as quote public goods, but they're really just everyone just trying to enrich themselves by benefiting the giant network as a whole. So it's a co uh, cooperative competition combined with some weird new form of, of network uh, benefit, shared benefit. So it's, I think there's a lot of uh, interesting stuff that can be explored there. And I absolutely see what you're saying, but just start with, we, we got money, so let's play around and see what comes up and then, uh, yeah, and just go from there. Yeah, exactly. And we will absolutely, between now and the end of the year, start running community call-based discussions or maybe some select workshops to start thinking about these longer-term possibilities, more just for fun and interest and brainstorming at the moment. Uh, but yeah, no, I appreciate you you stressing that and, and bringing that point up. Um, Muhammad, please, I, I know you've been waiting for a moment. Uh, yeah, so... Um... I had first put up my hand because at the end, before we got into altruism, uh, I think the last thing Jonathan said was about, you know, we're just going to be a nonprofit. And I wanted to emphasize that you can have a sustainable business model as a nonprofit. But um, on the altruism thing, um, I mean, with SourceCred, we're, we're kind of paying people to post. So did, did, did we see the altruism ground like, like on that? Because, because people have an incentive to participate like a, a, an actual direct financial incentive, not that the space doesn't have enough financial incentives, but did we see the altruism ground on that? Yeah, so especially with, with source cred, that's more of an opt-in model, as Chris just mentioned in uh, in chat. And Paul, I don't know if uh, if you want to jump in and specifically comment on, on your view on the engagement side there. Yeah, I mean, and I also would also, point to the uh, really good discussion and thread that Seth Benton put on the forum as well to so this like kind of like what all does this mean for incentivization and like how much uh, is actually there for source cred I mean ultimately this is not a whole bunch of money that we are kind of dealing with I get the like, like a, a balance that I'm very interested in and this is I think one of the reasons why we are moving in the slow pace that we are with source cred and trying to develop some of the um, guild, um, the guild structure around it is I am personally always very interested and concerned about the balance between intrinsic and extrinsic motivators. And like, I, we don't want to create systems that just exclusively um, reward extrinsic motivations. And like, that's the only reason why people behave. Like there's some really interesting research that suggests that like, you know, people are more willing to take shortcuts, uh, that quality tends to go down, um, that the threshold keeps moving up when there's exclusively extrinsically motivated uh, individuals in the system. So we also want to make sure that we're trying to make sure that we are attracting and rewarding and recognizing um, intrinsic work, um, motivated individuals. And part of that kind of commenting on the forum and kind of bringing this back to the idea of source cred is I mean, this is a kind of a small amount of money that kind of recognizes that this is difficult so uh, part of i think the idea behind implementing source cred is to generally recognize that some of the work of discussion or not some of the work the work of discussion and good discussion and the type of discussion that scurf is trying to have and host on our forum because it helps work through those kind of problem spaces and it is some of that facilitation is not easy to do and when things are not easy to do uh, it's really good to kind of provide some rewards for people as well and kind of recognize that labor like again um, i think i mentioned this in one of the community calls not too long ago uh, that i'm definitely coming from like a union perspective and so coming from a union perspective like hey make sure that uh, people are adequately um, compensated for the hard labor that they're doing and discussion is hard labor I think as well as kind of like the start of that I don't know if that got to Muhammad's question or not or if he even stayed on the call I thought I saw him just jump but that's kind of where I was out of that I lost my signal and jumped back on I caught Perfect. 99 98% of what you said and I, I got the sense okay um, then I do not with Umar did you have your hand up first 
I think and so. I will not I will not jump off of the middle if somebody's talking directly answering me especially I, <laughs> I, I, I just find that terrible so I'm not doing that <laughs> I didn't think that you would uh, yeah I, I would love to hop in uh, I'm gonna skirt the business model conversation because I have nothing to add there um, but uh, I, I was really interested in the uh, scurf um, mission conversation and specifically in sort of just talking about how do we achieve that mission and how do we um, measure how much we've uh, gotten towards achieving that mission. Um, the idea of connecting research to industry, I'm trying to like wrap my head around how much of the flow happens in which direction. And uh, so far it feels like the importance is really in bringing research to industry uh, and less in taking industry to research or academic practices. Um, and so I guess like some things that I'm curious if we have right now or if we'd, we'd like to see would be, um, how many people in industry are reading research summaries? How many people in an industry are benefiting from this? Uh, who is our target audience? Can we track the number of people we've had an impact on or the number of organizations? Are we targeting organizations that are like early, early career startups? Are we targeting like, you know, big guys like Chainlink or just anyone we can help? And then uh, sort of how do we track that um, and just like, you know, I guess maybe tying this a little bit back to the business model conversation. Um, uh, it, at least so far, it feels like SCURF has been funded through philanthropy and whether or not that's going to be uh, our continued model, I think no matter what model we have, we'll need to indicate how we've been successful. Um, and so I, I, I feel like these sorts of questions of just being able to show off our success to others will always be kind of crucial. Um, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely have some thoughts on that as well, uh, but I don't want to discourage other people. So Chris, I saw you were in there. So if you have something to jump in with what Umar was saying, that'd be great. And then we'll get to yeah, Jonathan. I can speak to some of those things like directly. Um, so I'll give some context. Early on in SCURF, it was brought up whether we should create a section on the forum for discussion of ethics. And it was decided against it because ethics is such a can of worms and it's like who's ethics and it's always going to be uh, a moving uh, metric anyway so it was like or it was decided early on that ethics would be left out of discussion until we were more robust and had more content and had more people within the administration to be able to handle those types of discussions so i think now we're at a point where those discussions are re-emerging but we can have them because we're more, uh, we have a, a more solid foundation in an or, as an organization, but we are constantly evolving as well. Um, so one of the things that came up early on is like, because we are funded, we don't necessarily have this external pressure, but we did have a mandate to the people funding the organization to show what we're doing. So we started developing ways to show Sergey and rich like hey this is what's happening in the organization we're like adding case studies or we're doing uh you know the discord five or, or like these are the ways that we're out like tangible output and and the things that we articulated as tangible output became points that we could show sergey and rich that we have tangible output but the one place that we are lacking is the qualitative feedback from the industry and academia for that matter so it's like we don't know how people are receiving we don't know if they're reading the summers we don't know if they're helpful and the easiest way we could do that is to ask them and i know there is effort to create those surveys and to create the qualitative feedback outreach but that once we have that then we can use that to modify our own internal processes to make sure that we are meeting their needs and that the actual goal that we are trying to accomplish is met um but i also do think that like it had it the outreach has been mainly bringing academia to industry because there was so much lack of exposure to academia within industry but now that the theories and the protocols have proliferated we have the capacity to start doing case studies and the case studies are also lacking. So that's why it's like, yeah, we do actually need to take ac industry to academia so they can do case studies and get hard data on the application of the protocols and the theories where that's not really like a widely available because 
industry is not reaching out to academia. They're not getting uh, objective case studies and anything that they're reporting is basically shilling or their own censored form of their uh, literature that doesn't actually give an objective assessment. And Jonathan, go ahead. Uh, I don't remember the substantive thing to add. I'll just back up but support what Irma was saying. Uh, it would be very cool to get more industry in the community and have measurable metrics to say how how much we do and the impact we're having. Yeah, I know that that is of growing interest uh, within our organization, right? So a like, good time to have these types of conversations. Um, Brian has been doing some work with uh, some analytics, and I think we are trying to develop what are meaningful metrics um, as is kind of often the, the call in a variety of different situations. Like you can measure a whole bunch of stuff, but whether or not you're measuring stuff that actually matters, like that is the harder question. And I think uh, we are starting to have some thoughts about like, well, what would be the meaningful things to measure and how does one meaningfully measure things? Uh, I do think that it is important and very important that the kind of target audiences uh, include uh, industry uh, leaders, developers and attracting them not just to read but also to participate. Um, one of the things that kind of Chris was mentioning a bit was the idea of, you know, how do you get uh, industry's qualitative perspective of whether or not this is useful or like how to make sense of it. And at least in my bias perspective, uh, considering what I do for Scurve, like I think some of that does emerge in, you know, what kind of feedback shows up on research summaries but also from an engagement or a moderation perspective one thing that i know that we want to do is like how can we highlight here's the really good useful immediate takeaways because part of our challenge is that we're trying to uh, connect to and interact with a very busy set of demographics both on the research and kind of builder side uh, but yeah jonathan welcome back yeah the the surveys the survey idea sounds very interesting um like just when you put up a research summary at the top of it you just have a few choices like i've read this it was useful i've read this it was not useful i started it and didn't finish or i'm just skimming it and from that you might get some interesting numbers to that we can measure but it also raises the question of whether you, you would need to force someone to create an account on discourse and on the scurf forum in order to interact in that way so i imagine a lot of industry will be given some research like if they're trying to make a DeFi protocol here's all the papers on DeFi security and they'll just read it they won't make a uh, post or want to engage yeah. uh, but it could still be useful and we want to see if if it's useful somehow yeah and i'd like i definitely would like to capture some of that i mean one of the one of the things that i love that you mentioned in one of your posts long ago jonathan was uh the idea that people do not typically want to professionally forum uh, and that is because like this is a hard thing to do like this like meaningful discussion is really hard to do and a lot of people including myself when i've gone to forums in the past like i'm looking for an answer i'm not looking uh to write a essay or a response uh, and i'm sometimes pulled into it and so that is i think the that is part of the public good that SCURF is offering is that through good discussion, we are able to get to better thinking, better approaches, better frameworks of how to think about questions, raise questions, or distill this into a possible actionable solution. And I'd really like us to be kind of highlighting that and using some of the tools of discourse to do that. Uh, so uh, anyone who's on this call or listening to the recording of this call who feels like they are particularly skilled at discourse, like I'd love to chat with you about uh, how we can maybe use some of the functionality of discourse or some of the plugins to capture some of the stuff like Jonathan was mentioning and kind of keeping track of things. But yeah, Lumar, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely super plus one, everything that was just said. And uh, especially the, um, you know, I was thinking, I was getting too complicated in my head. I was thinking like Google Forms and stuff, but like, just just using the discourse poll even would would be amazing on the uh, on the posts uh and um it's also sort of this conversation is making me think of like google analytics or like you know just like uh, tracking how people engage with the website you know how many minutes do they spend on a page um uh w w you know what section of the page do they spend it on um those those sorts of things could be really interesting just to see like for the content we produce um how are people digesting and absorbing it? And then I guess the second thing I want to say that I'm, I'm super interested in is uh, seeing how we can enhance the 
the funnel of people that are hearing about SCRF through things like um, maybe a newsletter or just um, more social media engagement where we just like have more and more people visiting the SCRF forum. Um, because ultimately, I think as uh, the people in industry who benefit from SCRF are only the ones who've heard about it. Um, and so we can really, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I would be happy to jump in on that also. And perhaps Maria could as well, if she is in on this call. But yeah, Chris, go ahead first. Yeah, like I think those ideas have definitely come up in the past. We just were not in a position or a place with enough content to support those concepts. Whereas now it's like if we had some sort of um, newsletter or publication or email, whatever that went out as on a periodic like frequency, it could have the um, research pulse, what's happening at SCURF and what's happening at the industry. So it becomes more like uh, an actual publication rather than just like, you know, this is our newsletter about what's happening at SCURF, where it's like, if we accumulate all the content and there's like summaries, and then there's like, you know, this is the, the calendar for what's happening, then it's like an actual publication. Um, even down to the point where it's like, then people would start, I mean, not to say that we want to sell it, but it's like people could start buying ad space in that publication eventually. So we didn't have the content before, but now we have the content, we have the agenda, we have the calendar, um, we have the content pipeline. There's a, enough things to support a publication and enough reason to create a publication as a form of outreach that I do think that is like, um, I know there's also discussion of some sort of publication, but it's like, yeah, maybe this is like a really good time to sort of develop uh, a SCURF publication that's explicitly like a journal or not necessarily a journal, but like a newsletter that's like on a specific period. Yeah, so Umar and Chris, I am like very excited to turn this over to Maria so she can tell you about some of the ideas and uh, also just in general. Um, I think we need to like part of this this conversation is like we have some of this stuff going on and like we need to make sure that it's coming back into our community a little bit more um, but yeah maria please yeah i heard newsletter my ears perked up <laughs> um, yeah i would love to yeah to second that point paul like how do we ensure everybody knows what is going on because we are launching a newsletter in the next couple weeks <laughs> so this is very much um top of mind for us it's going to start out as the research poll so what you guys see in the forum today it's going to be somewhat of a replica of that with additional information additional color around it but very similar to what you see the idea is to expand that over time right so we want to add projects that are happening in the ecosystem so that everybody can learn about what's going on. Events, jobs, what is happening at SCURF, all those are possibilities. And then tying it back to, I think, someone's earlier questions around um, what is the application of research in industry? Like that would be incredible for us to highlight. So then it's like, what's the coolest research out there uh, in one section and what is the most impressive application of research in another section being able to mirror the two how cool would that be um, that is definitely the bigger version or bigger vision of it down the line uh, but yes this is something that we are launching in the coming weeks and i think it would be great to probably talk about that i don't know in a ppp call coming soon. Um, and I think Michael and Ralph have a lot more information to share around that as well. And we'd love to start with the community here. So get it out to, you know, friends and family, aka our internal community first, um, as a soft launch, and then do a wider distribution for the entire space. And then I think going back to the user research question, at least on scurf.io we're very much taking both a 
qualitative and a quantitative approach. I think metrics, awesome, Google Analytics surveys, all these are awesome. Uh, I think using those in conjunction with actually talking to folks to figure out what is happening would round out our knowledge. So on scurf.io, for example, we are um, both measuring. So Brian helped set up Google Analytics for us. Thank you, Brian. So hopefully we'll start seeing some metrics around what is happening with scurf.io. And we're also uh, sending out questions to some of our target audiences. So people both on the academic side and on the industry side to get a sense of whether the, um, the value props are landing for them and whether the overall site is making sense, which I think would feed back nicely into some of this mission vision conversation that we're having here today. So hopefully that helps answer some of the questions that people had earlier. Yeah, that's amazing. Hype as hell. Yeah, I mean, and I just like organizationally, and I think this is, again, pertinent to this conversation today is, you know, how do we find mechanisms uh, to kind of show where these projects are happening? So those of us who are working on projects, it's very easy to forget uh, that not everyone is in all the same uh, GitHub tickets that we're in. So I know that that is like a really big push right now to also kind of help surface all this work. And yeah, Chris, go ahead. Well, there's a beetle yeah. losing it behind me. Well, just to know or to notify other people of what's happening within the organization. We have started funding um, primary research in the form of case studies specifically. Um, I know there's other things that have been funded, but we're still trying to figure out like where the budget issues are going to put that, but it's like shifting from secondary to primary research as the main focus in the next like phase of the grant program. So we're definitely like, I'm super excited about that. But I think Rich is just, if not more excited about doing primary research. So I, I'm like, the re I don't know how many people in the organization know about it, but that's where I'm like, yeah, in case you didn't know, we're definitely starting to fund more primary research. Yeah, I think since we are here in the last minute of this call, um, you know, to me, a big takeaway is uh, we have really cool stuff going. We need to make sure that we create a space where everyone kind of knows where that really cool stuff is going. Uh, I think that we have uh, an interest as an organization of kind of measuring what we are doing in some of those metrics, but I also think that we are doing so cautiously so that uh, SCURF doesn't become an organization that only cares about its metrics, but ultimately cares about that mission of facilitation and long-term conversation and accomplishing a mission as opposed to uh, accomplishing some metrics. Um, so I know that everybody who's in this call is uh, open to feedback and how to make these things better. Um, any last, like we're right at one, so any last minute stuff before we go over into Discord and go to our first live event. Yeah, there's an analytics group that meets every month and this is Brian speaking. If you'd like to join that discussion, the analytics guild, feel free to reach out to me and I'll give you an invite for next month. Thank you for that reminder, uh, Brian. And with that, uh, everyone just jump on over into our Discord. And uh, Jonathan, I hope you are ready to accept all of us into this awesome event that we're doing today. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, everyone. That, have a great day.